Hi, I'm Valerie Openchain, and today I'm going to talk about reading VCF data into R with the Variant Annotation Package. Variant Annotation has several functions for reading in data. The first one we're going to take a look at is Read VCF, and this function allows you to read in um, subsets of data or all of the data, and it reads it into something called a VCF class in R. And Read GT Read Geno and Read Info, um, these are more of a lightweight form of the read function. So they don't read the data into a VCF class. Um, instead, they read in a single variable and they read it in as numeric or character, um, maybe a vector or matrix, depending upon the dimension. But it's a more readily computable form of the data, and again, just a single field. And the third thing is uh, Read VCF as V ranges. And this function is a flattened form of the data. So it, it reads it into something called the vRanges class, which is an extension of gRanges, for those of you that are familiar with that. And um, it, it basically it expands the data by sample. And so we'll take a look at that also. So let's start our demo. So first we're going to load the variant annotation package. And we're going to use some sample data from the same package. And our first call is going to be to read VCF with the file and the genome build. And then we're going to take a look at what we've got here. So this is a VCF class, and the dimension is 3791 by 2. So we've got 3,791 variants and two samples. And the data are um, packaged into different slots in this class. And the first one is this row data slot. So this is a G ranges containing the ranges of the variants and um, the reference and alt alleles as the metadata columns. The info slot, we can see it's a data frame with 16 columns, and we can also access all of the header information that came from the file. It's been parsed and put into this VCF object as well. Okay, so looking down now at the Gino, we see that we have a list of 31 variables in the in the geno slot and um, again all of the header information is accessible to us. Okay so that first example was reading in all of the data and so now I want to show you just reading in a particular range. So if you you know a range of variants that you're interested in you can create this scan VCF param and give that to read VCF and that will bring in only the variants in that range. So you can see down here our dimension is much reduced. We had almost 4,000 rows before, and now we've only got 12 by 2. So if you know the ranges of the variants that you're interested in, this is a, it's a good thing to do to get a focused subset of your data. So similarly, we can do the same thing with fields. Again, we would create this scan VCF param and specify an info field and specify a geno field. Go ahead and give that to read VCF. Okay, so now we see we have uh, the same dimension actually as our first VCF because we've subset by field and not by position. So we have all variants in this in this object. And the difference comes here is in the info we have a data frame with one column, our SS, and down here we have one uh, genotype variable in the geno slot. Right. So next, this is uh, one of the lightweight read functions. This is read geno, where you just specify a single geno field. So we're going to specify ft, which is actually a filter. And as you can see, it's not coming in as a VCF class. Instead, it's coming in as a matrix. We have our same dimensions. And then this, this apply is just a little summary um, for, for the, the variable, for the two samples. So sample dash N1 and sample dash T1 here. Um, idea being this is a quick way to get at a specific field out of the file and do a quick computation on it. Okay, so the last thing I wanted to show you is uh, reading data into this vRanges with read VCF as vRanges. You can see this looks a lot like a gRanges object, certainly. It's got our ranges here, and then it has um, our metadata columns over here. And by default, this function only reads in the AD, the allylic depth genotype variable, um, and all of the fixed fields. 
but you can certainly change that by using a param and you can specify any info or geno fields that you want to bring in. And it, it reps the data out and expands it by sample. Okay, so that wraps it up for my demo. I had one last slide that I wanted to show you. Oops. And here are some resources for you. Larger screen so you can actually see it. Uh, the variant annotation package landing page where you can go ahead and take a look at the vignettes and uh, a variant workflow that we have on our website. And then um, if you're interested in a particular topic or subject, uh, these BIOC views are a great way to search the packages in the Bioconductor repository. So you may want to check that out too. Okay, that concludes my demo. Thank you.